Hello everyone. So welcome you all to this video. As I've told you right, I'm going to be uploading the videos regularly for the subject uh, digital communication. So now the past is past. That is the DSP exam has been uh, gone good for some of the students and uh, some students were saying that DSP was uh, a bit difficult. So that the exam is done. Now our next focus is on this subject that is digital communication, right? So this is again a very tricky subject guys. The problems are very, very vast and complicated. So I'm going to be trying to cover mostly all of them, which is there in your syllabus. Okay. The first two modules are, it is like a, a complete uh, theory part. There is much, nothing much to study, but the real like, test starts from module three onwards, where we will be having the encoding and decoding part where different algorithms and uh, mathematics would be getting involved. That is starting from the information theory and coding, error control coding and convolutional coding. Okay. So these three are the module three, four, five of this subject. Those are very tricky, but uh, the starting two modules are not, not that much tricky. There are some sure short questions, which I'm going to be discussing in all the upcoming videos. Okay. So whatever videos I do from now, all of them are very important from the exam point of view and all of them are the multiple times repeated questions in the previous year papers also. Okay. So that's why please watch all these videos guys. Okay. Some of the videos I'm going to be keeping it free and uh, others I'm going to be keeping it for members only. Okay. So yeah, let us start with the first today's concept that is of properties of Hilbert transform. So this is the repeated question in previous five year question papers. Okay. You, you check out all the question papers, take all of them. And this question is there in all of them properties definition of Hilbert transform and its properties. Okay. So that's why I'll, I'll do this video. It consists of four properties. First property is it states that the signal X of T and its Hilbert transform X cap of T have the same amplitude spectrum. Okay. So this is the first property. It states like this though in order to represent this in mathematically, we could be writing this equation as X cap of T is equal to X of T into H of T. Okay. It is the having the same amplitude spectrum where X cap of T can also be written as X of T into one by pi T. Okay. Where this is the impulse signal with respect to the variation angle pi. So that's why it is given as X of T into one by pi T. So now the Fourier transform, if you take the Fourier transform of the above signal, we would be getting X cap of F. Okay. From time domain, it is changed to frequency domain now after taking the Fourier transform. So that is given by X cap of F is equal to X of F minus J into signum function of f. So this is the SGN stands for signum function. Okay. So that is J into SGN of f. So if we simplify it, X cap of f would be nearly equal to X of f if we consider only the real part. Okay. Because we have considered the magnitude. So that's why the phase part would be cancelled. So it would be having the same amplitude spectrum. Okay. So that's why you see here X of f is same for both the sides. And uh, if you take it in the time domain also it would be remaining the same if you take the inverse Fourier transform. So therefore X cap of T is equal to X of T. Okay. So this is all about the first property. If you should be writing these many points when they ask for a property one. Now second property, this property states that if X cap of T is the Hilbert transform of the signal X of T, then the Hilbert transform of X cap of T is equal to minus X of T. Okay. So this is the second property with respect to the Hilbert transform. That is if X, if the X cap of T is the Hilbert transform of signal X of T, then the Hilbert transform of X cap of T is equal to minus X of T. Okay. So that's why the Hilbert transform would be equal to itself along with its negative spectrum. Okay. So that is represented here. X of T it's a uh, HT Hilbert transform it would be X cap of T. If you take it's again Hilbert transform, it would be coming back to X of T. So how it could be proved you see here first H of T into H of T that is H dash of T one by pi T into one by pi T. So now apply Fourier transform. We will be getting H dash of F in frequency domain. That would be equal to minus J into signum function of F into minus J into signum function of F. So that's why minus into minus plus. So J into J is J square signum function square of F. So H dash of F would be equal to minus f. Okay. So this would be equal to one. So we know that signum function of any term would be one itself. And here J square can be written as minus one. Since we know that the complex term J is represented as square root of minus one. Okay. So that's why J square would be equal to minus one. So that's what I finally would be getting H dash, H dash of f, f equal to minus one. Now 
x of f is equal to h dash of f that is minus 1 that would be giving you minus x cap of f. So that's why what we would be getting x cap of f is equal to x of f into h dash of f. So just now we have proved that h dash of f whatever the impulse variance which we get that would be equal to 1 so sorry minus 1 so that's why we would be getting x cap of f is equal to minus x of f. If you take the inverse Fourier transform then you would be getting x cap of t is equal to minus x of t. Okay so that's why we have proved property 2 as well. Now let's get to property 3. Property 3 states that the signal x of t and x dash of t are orthogonal. Okay orthogonal means if you do the convolution of those two signals with respect to their Hilbert transform they would be getting the answer would be nullifying that would be equal to 0. Okay so let us see that for that you should be taking the integration from minus infinity to infinity x of t into x, x cap of t dt so it would be uh, minus infinity to infinity integration x of f into x cap of f df in the frequency domain if you take the Fourier transform so now x of f into x cap of uh, f into h of f df you should be considering the impulse also so that's why you would be getting minus infinity to infinity x of f the whole square here okay these two would be getting multiplied into h, h star of f df where h of f is equal to minus j sgn of f h star of f that is the conjugate would be the negative of that so that's why minus and if you if you, if you take its uh, conjugate it would be plus so that's why h conjugate of f would be j into sgn of f so that would be replaced here so totally we would be getting minus infinity to infinity integral x of f the whole square j into sgn of f df where this is the even and this is odd term so even odd term are uh, inversely proportional to each other so that's why those two would be getting cancelled out so we would be getting our final answer as my uh, integration from minus infinity to infinity x of t into x cap of t a function and its Hilbert transform if you uh, combine it together we would be getting the orthogonality nature so that's why you would be getting the answer as zero okay so this is the third property now let's get to the property number four it says that if c of t that is a carrier signal and m of t message signal are signals with non-overlapping spectra where m of t is a low frequency signal and c of t is a high frequency signal then the if its multiplication or convolution that is m of t into c of t would be equal to m of t into c cap of t okay so that's why its Hilbert transform of carrier signal would be varying with respect to the change in the message signal okay so this is the property number four under Hilbert transform so these are the four important properties of Hilbert transform which you need to be knowing so yeah that's why I thought to do this video separately okay so that's for, that, that was it for this video guys we'll see you in the upcoming videos with some other concepts of module one and uh, we are going to be studying a lot of things okay so stay tuned don't uh, miss any of the videos guys because in the upcoming uh, 9, uh, 9 to 10 days you are having the exam of digital communication so there are a lot of holidays for you guys to study utilize this time watch all of our videos videos and study well okay we'll see you in the next video guys thank you